Page 13, Petite Waltz, or line 11. I might mention here on a Petite Waltz, the Waltz, it's a foreign spelling for the a Waltz. A Waltz is some, a dance in 3-4 time, or a piece in 3-4 time. You have fast waltzes and slow waltzes. You just think of people waltzing, and that's sort of what this is. 3-4 time, you have quarter notes and dotted half notes, no big deal. And it's two lines long. You see that it, you know, you got to look for that thin and thick bar line to see where the end is because you don't know how many lines long it's going to be, but it's two lines long total. We have an A, a new note. Look at the second line, the third to the last measure. There's an A. It is the next to the bottom space in the treble clef. You already know where A is on the piano because we've had A in the bass clef already. Now you have it in the treble clef. That's all. New note. Make sure you know it. The big thing they're introducing here is the key signature. You see at the beginning of the lines they put a sharp sign in. Well, we've had a key signature all along because no sharps or flats is a key signature. I just didn't talk about it because I was waiting for them to get to this part. A key signature tells you what key you're in. Well, I'm not, I don't mean key on the piano, that it has different meanings. We have harmony in music. We have here. You have all these different, each one is a key. We have been in the key of C for the most part before. No sharps or flats, it's just C. It's all the white keys on the piano, it's just C. Well, now they put in a sharp sign in the key signature. So now it is the key of G up here. It has a slightly different sound to it than C. I'll talk more about these, and it, it's better when you start doing the scales. That's where I really like. I like to teach these different key signatures by doing the scales. Because if you learn the scale, you'll learn all the different notes in that key because the key of G doesn't use all just the white keys, it has a black key in it. And that is an F sharp. Well, if you haven't had this in the treble clef yet, but that top line in the staff, that is an F. That is where an F would be. If they wanted you to play an F way up here, that, they'd put that note on that line. Well, when they put the sharp on that line at the beginning, it, it's an F. It means all the Fs in that staff throughout their piece are automatically F sharp. This way they don't have to put the sharp sign in front of every single F as it comes along. They just put it at the beginning and you automatically know all the Fs are sharp. You have to remember it. So in the here, you're starting out in the right hand with thumb here. Thumb. We're not in C position here. We're here. But when you get to the F, instead of the F, you're automatically going to play F sharp. All the Fs are going to be sharp. So the position is not here. Now the position is here because of the key signature. I'll talk a lot more about key signatures as we go on. It's probably time I started talking about the scales, but I'll wait a little bit. Then the other new symbol they're introducing here is, look at the last couple of measures there in the second line. Either hand, doesn't matter. It's got a curved line connecting those notes together. It's called a tie. You tie the notes together. It means you hold the first note down for the length of both notes. You see, we have a problem in music in that the, the time signature, the numbers, according to those, you have a limit to how big the notes can be in a measure. In 3-4 time, you can't have more than three beats in a measure. That's a dotted half note. Well, if you wanted a note to last longer than three beats, what do you do? Because it's, you can't. There's no note for that. So the ties come in, and they don't have to be across bar lines, you can put ties anywhere, but the tie it involves two notes, you can only tie two notes at a time, and they have to be the same note. If it changes to a different note, it's not a tie anymore, it's something else, so I'll talk about that when we get to that. So on here in the right hand, the G, the last two measures, that dotted half note G gets three counts and the quarter note G gets one count which means you're going to hold that G down for four counts total. One, two, three, one and then lift up. 
So this way we got a note lasting four beats and a three, four time signature. And that's how they can do that. Now this curved line is used for other things besides ties. It's a little confusing sometimes, but I'll talk about it when we get there. Just get this much learned. So this is out of the way. So you got enough to think about because they're going to keep throwing stuff at you. If you're already getting a little confused and behind, then please go back and go through this part of the book again. However many times you got to go until you got it. So in the right hand, we're starting here. And your quarter notes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's basically all it is. In the left hand, you have second finger on the B. That puts you here. Notice I put the finger on F sharp because there's an F sharp in the key signature. See in the lower staff, that sharp sign is where the F would be. But it's not just that F, it's any F in that staff. All the Fs are automatically sharped. You don't have any. Doesn't matter. It's got to be there. It's part of the rules. So you just have these notes in the left hand. They're dotted half notes. And then rests and all that junk. You got that. So just try it here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Isn't this fun? One, two, blah, blah, blah. Let's go over down to the second line. Fourth measure over where the left hand plays, it's here. One, two, three, one, two, three, what? Now they got both hands playing at the same time. This is the first time this has happened. You can tell because the notes line up vertically. You can see they line up, and according to the beat, they both play on beat one of that measure. So you simply play both at the same time. And the next measure, again, play them at the same time. And they're both tied, so you're going to head all down four counts. One, two, three, one, off. Like so. So now we're playing the hands at the same time. So you learn it. Get it to where you can play this without any hesitations. Then come back and play it with me. We'll check the notes and the rhythms to make sure you have it. One, ready, go. too painful I hope. Let's do the duet. So I'll do the part on the previous page and you do this and we'll play it together. So go ahead and put your hands where they go and here we go. Now if you have another person there to play with you and they're on the same keyboard you're going to kind of get in each other's way so you may need to move your part up. So rather than here, come up here and pretend middle C is here and play it all up here here because the duet part is using these notes down here but if you have two keyboards or you just play it with me it doesn't matter play it where you want it one ready go two Three, one, two, three. 